So in this video, we're going to be setting up and installing Webpack from scratch. Uh, the first thing I want to do before we get started is I just want to make you aware of this repo that I've created specifically for this course. So if you go to my GitHub profile, github.com slash my name, Robert Gus, and then Webpack 5 Fundamentals course, this contains all the code that we're going to be writing throughout this course. And if you click on this master branch drop down here, I've created branches for all the videos at every step of the way. So if you get stuck at a particular point or your code isn't working, you can just check out one of these branches at the specific point and then you'll have the same code that I'm using in the videos. Uh, this is really useful for debugging. If you have some kind of issue that you don't know what's going on, just check your code with what I've got in this repo and make sure it matches um, identically. And in worst case scenario, you can just copy and paste to get everything working. Uh, but if you still have issues, uh, definitely hit me up in the forums and in the questions, and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you need to make sure that you've got Node.js installed. So if you go to Node.js.org, uh, you're going to want to click on this LTS version. This is the long-term support version. At the time, I've got 12.18.3. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you're pretty much, if you've got a version greater than 10, you should be fine. Uh, so make sure you download this. This is available for all platforms, Linux, Windows, Mac. It's very straightforward. It installs just like any other program or application. So once you've got Node.js installed, you can confirm it by going to your terminal and typing in node space dash v. And so I've got version 12.18.0. Um, and I'm currently just in an empty directory in my system. I've called it Webpack 5 Fundamentals. As you can see, there's nothing in here. Uh, you can call it whatever you like. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to initialize a uh, new Git repository. Uh, you don't have to do this for the video. I'm just doing this for my own sake to keep track of things. Um, after that, we need a package.json file in order to install Webpack because we need uh, npm. So if you run npm init-y, this will create a brand new package.json file for us, which is exactly what we need. So guys, throughout this course, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be walking you through uh, the documentation as much as I possibly can. And the reason for that is I kinda of wanna teach you how to teach yourself. Um, what happens with a lot of these courses is you take a tutorial and it's not specific enough to your needs and so you take the tutorial and you understand what the other person's doing and you're copying pasting and typing in their code but then when it comes time to actually applying it for your own specific project and you have unique needs it's tough to really know where to go and how to get those answers so my hope is by teaching you by walking through the documentation you'll be able to find out everything you possibly need about webpack when you need to do things that are very specific to your project that i'm not covering in this course in particular Again, if you have issues, just hit, uh, hit me up in the forums and I'll uh, help you out as much as I possibly can. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, you want to go to webpack.js.org. This is Webpack's homepage. Go to documentation. Then we're going to go down here to guides. And we're going to follow along with this getting started guide. So the first thing we do, we're going to make a folder, which we already did, npm init-y. That creates that package.json file that we just did. So now we need to install Webpack and Webpack CLI. Uh, there's only one slight little modification we need, and that's to install Webpack at next. And that's going to give us the latest version of Webpack, which is Webpack 5. So if we do npm install Webpack at next, then we're going to do Webpack CLI dash dash save dash dev. This will get us what we need in order to get Webpack installed. Okay, cool. So Webpack's installed and Webpack CLI is installed. Now let's go back to our text editor. I'm going to create a new directory called source, SRC. And then I'm going to stick a new file in there. I'm just going to call it index.js. And for something real simple, I'm just going to do a console log of hello from Webpack. Okay, cool. Let's go back to the docs and see what we need to do next. Uh, this is for a basic setup, and I want to show you the little more advanced setup, because this is what you're going to see in the real world, and this is the things we're going to be covering in this course, is how to use a Webpack configuration. 
So we first need to create this webpack.config.js. So if you go back to our text editor, um, within the root of the project, create this webpack.config.js file. Let's go back. And then within webpack.config, uh, we're going to put in this code. I'm going to copy and paste this right now, and then I'm going to walk you through what each, each line is doing. So the first thing we're doing is we're including this path module. Uh, this comes from Node itself. This is not anything related to Webpack in particular. Then we're doing module.exports. Again, this is specific to Node. We're exporting this object. And so now we're getting into Webpack stuff. The first thing you see here, this uh, entry called, or I'm sorry, this key called entry. This is extremely important. This is telling Webpack, okay, Webpack, all of the files, everything that you need to bundle is going to be coming from this file, which we just created, this src index.js, which just says it's console.log. But in the future, we're going to have CSS files and additional JavaScript files. Everything is going to flow through this single index.js file. Now, you can also have multiple entries when you want to do code splitting, but that's something we'll get to later on in the course. The next one that's extremely important is this output file. So this output key is this object here, and we're telling, this tells Webpack, take everything from this index.js file. When you're done bundling everything and processing it, output it with the file name main.js, and then output it to this path. And so this is where this path module is coming into play, where we're basically saying, stick everything into the root of this directory into a folder called dist. Now, as you can see, dist does not exist, but when we run the command, Webpack will make that folder for us. I also like to call uh, my bundles bundle.js. That just makes it really clear that this index.js is the source file, and this bundle.js is something that Webpack, um, Webpack output it and created for us. So let's go back to our docs. So they have us running a command in the terminal here, but I'm just going to skip that because the much easier way is just to do an npm script. So we're just going to create this build webpack command. So if we go back to our text editor, back to the package.json, replace this test command with build, and then we're just going to do webpack. So if we go back to our terminal, clear this, do npm run build. So you can see everything worked, everything's green, built bundle.js. And then if we come back to our code editor, now we've got that disk folder and here's our bundle, which is not too exciting. It's literally the same code that we had in the index source file. But the good news is, if you've gotten this far, everything's working. Webpack is wired up and working properly. Uh, but if you could tell, the only issue with this is every time we make a change to our source file, we're going to have to be manually writing and typing in that command and running that build command constantly every time we're making changes, uh, which is not ideal, especially in development. So in the next video, what we're going to be doing is setting up the Webpack dev server with hot module reloading.